Welcome to the Let's Reason Together podcast. Um, I'm excited to be here. I know all our viewers and listeners are excited. Um, it's another episode in the life of Daniel, and I'm hyped. I got Chantal next to me. Uh, she let out last week. She did a great job. Did a great job leading out. I'm leading out this week, and I'm just excited. And I, I want you to be excited by subscribing, all right, to our YouTube channel, Let's Reason Together podcast, and on Spotify as well. And uh, we're going to get in depth into the life of Daniel again. We only, listen, Chantal, last time we spent an hour on two verses. <laughs> Did you believe that? People are like, dude, you could have finished the whole book. No, the whole chapter, but we uh, we only did two verses last time, and we may do two verses this time too, uh, but you know, I'm excited, and I know God is going to do something great. I was listening to some podcasts today, um, not Christian podcasts, but like, you know, telling stories, and we want to tell the story of Daniel. We want people to understand that the life that Daniel lived, uh, some people may be going through that as well. And they can get some encouragement from the book of Daniel. So, again, viewers, listeners, subscribe. Let's Reason Together on YouTube and on Spotify. And if you're interested in some more in-depth Bible studies, Seekers of Present Truth on YouTube as well. Seekers of Present Truth, that's a, a great Bible study. They're usually uh, Saturday evenings around 6. And those last around an hour or two. So subscribe to that channel and subscribe to this one, Let's Reason Together podcast. Okay, no more announcements. <laughs> Chantal, you want to pray for us? Sure. Let's do it. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your grace. Thank you so much for your love. Um, Lord, I'm reminded that um, Moses was cognizant of the fact that he could do nothing without you. So when you sent him, he said, I will not go unless you promise to go with me. And because I know, and I'm sure Victor knows too, how inadequate we are to present the truth, we're asking that your presence will abide with us. We're asking, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit will take control of our expressions, our thoughts, our words, our discussion. And I pray that only your name will be glorified, only your name will be lifted up. And as you are lifted up, I pray that you will draw all closer to you. We don't just ask, Lord, we beseech you and plead with you to come near to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Last week, we, we, got, we got into the reason why. How do we even have Daniel as a captive in Babylon? Mm -hmm. So I just want to give a quick recap. Um, we saw that the city of peace is given into the hands of the king of confusion, Babylon, Jerusalem, mm -hmm. Judah. Uh, the line of the tribe of Judah is supposed to come out of uh, the tribe of Judah, and yet they're being taken into captive, captivity. The Lord is actually giving Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all of Judah into the hands of Babylon. And many people thought, man, this is, we're starting off on a bad note. But we, all, we, we found out how God is long-suffering, right? Mm -hmm. He's merciful. He was pleading through his prophets. Um, and... Judah just wasn't wasn't having it. They continued to worship idols, false teachings. I mean, it was it was bad. We went over the kings. We went over Ahaz. We went over Manasseh and the good kings, Hezekiah and Josiah. But uh, we're here now, and we we finished off in verse three of of, uh, of Daniel. So if you're watching or listening, turn in your Bibles to Daniel chapter one, and we're going to be in verse three to seven hopefully we'll get there i'm not promising but um there's there's some good stuff but you know daniel is now taken captive uh, in my in my uh research i found that it w took over 400 miles to get to babylon so mm -hmm. you become a eunuch you lose your manhood man and we taught i those who those men who researched that after, young men, if you didn't know what that was and you researched that, it's a bad thing. You're taken from your home. You're taken from your, your friends, your family. Uh, you basically have nothing. And you have to walk all the way to the desert to a heathen kingdom. Everything's different. Food is different. People are different. Uh, uh, environment is different. And how is one supposed to handle that? Um 
Daniel went through some trauma, mm -hmm. some physical trauma, emotional trauma, mental trauma, uh, and it was intentional. This is what uh, commanders, generals do. Look, if, if you're my captive, I'm here to brainwash you. Mm -hmm. So we see that not only this is in a, in a microcosm about Daniel, but also there's a great controversy here, right? Mm -hmm. In verse 3, it ended last, last week that um, they took the vessels of, the God, of God, the God of Israel, and brought them to the house of the God of Babylon, which was Marduk. And we're going to talk a little bit about the gods as we go forward. But this is where we're at, Chantal. But what was the good news we left off last week, Chantal, in, in Jeremiah 29? 11 right mm -hmm. and verses 11 to 13 that, that even goes. 70 years right mm -hmm. still god is good yeah he um as you rightfully said god knows the plans he has for us mm -hmm. and you're talking about listening to podcasts today i actually listened to a podcast yesterday and today as well nice. but a christian podcast okay called why did i do that oh, or why good. did they do that yes. i forgot right and I listened to one with D. Casper and the host, and it was phenomenal. I didn't know I was oh, going to talk about one. Daniel, that's right? That's a good one. That it was, was good so one. good. It was like water that to was, my thirsty soul. Flames. It was really, really good. Yeah, that was good. And, um, you know, like, one thing that really stuck out to me was how much Daniel did go through mm -hmm. and how he stayed faithful. Yes. But also how merciful God is. And that's the message of um, mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 2. 29 like mm -hmm. despite the fact that you messed up and mm -hmm. you kind of just like mm -hmm. ruined everything in captivity because daniel um jeremiah 29 was when they were in captivity like god had a message for his people yeah. like i've brought you here it seems like it's the end of the world it seems like you know mm -hmm. like your mistakes and your consequences are so horrible that there's nothing redeemable or redemptive or can be restored about your life mm -hmm. but the message was no yeah. I allowed you because I still have plans for you yeah. to give you a hope and an expected end. Mm. And it's just like, you know, it's such an encouragement when we've really messed up and we're dealing with the consequences of all our mess. Like mm -hmm. Jacob, when he had really messed up and he thought mm. God had forsaken him and he yeah. was running. Right. And he really, when you read what um, the commentary says about it, like Jacob really thought that God had forsaken him. Yeah. And so as he laid in the middle of the night on the stone, he thought God had forsaken forsaken him because of his mistake mm -hmm. but then he had that vision and yeah. in that vision was that ladder that connected heaven with earth and it was like christ was saying in your despair in your brokenness in the knowledge that you messed up royally mm -hmm. i'm here yeah. and i'm saying that i'm gonna do something about it so your bondage your captivity is is the greatest evidence that i am with you and i'm gonna help you mm -hmm. it's just amazing yeah no joseph went through similar mm -hmm. i mean these joseph and daniel are like the uh, the uh, 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 poster boys of faithfulness in the yeah. Bible. It's like your brothers want to kill you, but then they decide not to kill you. They throw you in a pit, and then um, they they literally sell you as a slave to Egypt. And Joseph's faithful. Mm -hmm. Joseph Joseph is faithful that whole time. Daniel is faithful that whole time. So, listeners and viewers, how do we get that way? Mm -hmm. Like, what are the secrets and keys to being faithful? In you know. Ancient Babylon's fallen, mm -hmm. but we're going to study about a modern Babylon. Mm -hmm. We're living in Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. Spiritual Egypt, spiritual Babylon. We're living in this world of sin. How do we stay faithful? Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to get into it amidst all the trauma, tribulation, trials. Like Daniel went through it. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people going through it. And they don't talk about it in church. They don't talk about it in Bible study. They don't talk about it nowhere, but people are hurting. They're going through stuff. Um, hopefully we can bring, no, not hopefully. I know we can bring you some encouragement this evening. Mm -hmm. And also I got to make a correction. Last week I made up a word. You know, preachers tend to make up words and I got to correct myself. I said receptible. It was supposed to be receptive. Nebuchadnezzar was receptive to God's spirit. Um, but I said receptible. I, I combined receptive and susceptible. I want to apologize. It's not a word. Um, it's receptive. Okay. So if anyone who listened to last week's podcast, I made a correction. Also, I think you said Manasseh was 55 years reigning. Was it 52? 52. <laughs> Good so catch. I went back and, and listened. And, you know, we got to make our, we're, we're biblical Bible students, so we got to keep it biblical. Catch, so let's get into catch. the text because I'm excited. Um, <clears throat> verse three, it mm -hmm. says, and the king spake unto Ashpenaz, 
the master of his eunuchs, okay, confirming the prophecy given by Isaiah to Hezekiah that all your kings, the sons that you bear, will become eunuchs. There's a fulfillment right here. Mm. Um, AK saying that Daniel was made a eunuch. Um, the king seed, these people were all made eunuchs. Mm. Huh. Horrible. And <laughs> that he should bring certain children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Right. So most of, you know, when, when I grew up hearing this, this, this story, it was like, they just grabbing kids off the street. Like, you know, they taking everybody captive and everybody's in the Royal line, you know, but that's not the case. It's like Daniel wasn't just on the street, bro. Like playing games, like, you know, wasting time just on the stoop with his boys in an, uh, uh, um, let me get their names here. Hananiah, Michelle, Nazariah. They weren't just on the stairs. Like, you see pictures in Brooklyn where people just on the stoop chilling. These were royalty. Mm -hmm. These people were what these young children were educated. Right. And, and they had a purpose in life and they were following God and studying his law. So it says children of Israel and of the King's seed and of the princes. Mm -hmm. This guy, this kid's royalty. Last mm -hmm. time we studied, he's, 15 years old, about 15 years old. Some say 17, some say 15. We'll just say 15, right? He Just think what you were doing at 15. I, bro, I know I wasn't on a royal tip. Like, I wasn't, I, was, I was playing ball. I was skating. Um, I was watching sports. Um, you know, it, it, I, at 15, I was not a, of the royal seat. You know, we're, we're in Daniel chapter 1. Uh, and verse three, and this is what is bringing out these dudes, these kids, these children weren't just living their life. They were royalty. Mm -hmm. And this is what Nebuchadnezzar saw in them. Why? You know, like that makes common. that just makes sense. Chantal, like I'm not going to pick kids who have no purpose, who are just on the street in Jerusalem. Like they're not, I'm not going to pick them for my royalty. Mm -hmm. Right. So Nebuchadnezzar is a master, mm -hmm. a master general, a master uh, uh, of, of war, of the art of war. And he's here and he's here uh, ready to brainwash these kids. Mm -hmm. That's just what it is. Um, he's here to brainwash. So can you read verse, verse four, Chantal? We're in Daniel chapter one, verse four. Daniel chapter one, verse four. Okay. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Okay. Talk to me about children. Why not grown men, Chantal? Like, why is it that the, the Nebuchadnezzar is going after these young children, 15, teens, early teens? Well, that's a very good question. There was, um, I don't know if it's an analogy or whatever, but you know the story, like you don't train a tree when it's a whole grown tree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You train it when it's bendable, yes. you know, so you can, you know, set it upright or slant it in whatever mm -hmm, direction. Mm -hmm. I think that's the same principle that Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar has. You know, if you train them while they're young, mm -hmm. you know, then you can mold them into what you want them to be. And notice, right, verse 4. It says that they, whom they might teach the learning on the tongue of the Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. So he's training them to operate in his court. Mm -hmm. He's fitting them with all the knowledge that Babylon has to offer so that they can function mm. as prime ministers, ministers, like heads, whatever. Yes. Like he's training them to function in his kingdom. So he's, he's really, you're right. He's smart. Like he's taking, he's not taking just anybody. He's taking the brightest and the best. And I think I read maybe in second Kings, like the, one of the last chapters mm -hmm. that, um, he took the skilled laborers, the artisans. He took like people who yep. could do people who were skilled, were yes. brilliant, were educated, yes. were trained. And he's bringing them to his kingdom to build his kingdom. Yes. So he wants to build something that, you know, can really last. Mm -hmm. So he's smart. Mm -hmm. He's taking the brightest and he's teaching them all about Babylon yep. and giving them a place, you know, so they feel, you know, included. And he's treating them like royalty because yes. He is royalty mm -hmm. and he's taking royalty and he's putting them in the royal palace. Mm -hmm. So they're not outside of their element. He's mm -hmm. placing them back in their element, but only with the knowledge of the Babylonians. Okay. And he's slick. This guy, this guy, Nebuchadnezzar is smart mm -hmm. and he's slick, but I want to read, there's a book called prophets and Kings. 
If you want a free copy, just hit us down in the comments. Uh, we want a free book, Prophets and Kings. We'll send it to you. Leave us your address. This is commenting. This is commenting on the courts of Babylon. Check this out. This is how uh, the author describes Daniel and his three friends. Wait, what um, page? Uh, we're in chapter thirty-nine, and this is page uh, four seventy-nine, paragraph one. Okay. Chapter thirty-nine, uh, in the court of Babylon. Page 479, paragraph 1. Among the children of Israel who were carried captive to Babylon at the beginning of the 70 years of captivity, uh, Jeremiah 29, 10, were Christian patriots. Mm. Mercy. Uh, all I, you know, we, we're in America. And I was born here. And most people are American patriots. And when you think of patriot, you think of a soldier. These, these guys ride or die for the country red white, and blue and they'll do anything a patriot will give his life will give his life for his country hmm. the author here ellen white describes daniel and his three friends as christian patriots hmm. men who were true as steel to principle and who would not be corrupted by selfishness but who would honor god at the loss of all things wow. they didn't care I don't care about my life. I don't care. I'm honoring God. Look, at, I love that description. True as steel to principle. Mm. You try to hit steel, it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> try to break it, bend it. I mean, you got to heat it up to bend it. But true as steel. This is, this is a component of why these young men, despite the trauma, loss of family, loss of home, loss of friends, loss of manhood, loss of everything at 15 years old, their connection with God kept them. You know how many people break? You know how many people like have so much re residual effects of this trauma of like taking you out of your home, becoming uh, a, a new citizen in this heathen court. It's only because of God. Mm -hmm. Like, so that, that hit me today. Like I, I mentioned, I was watching a podcast and this guy went through a lot. Parents died, grew up single mom, you know, single family, single mother, uh, seven kids, whatever, whatever. And he's my age now, trauma, crying, like in despair, despondency, like no one helped me. And the world, there is no help. Hmm. It's drugs, money, girls, cars, whatever it may be, distractions. But for us as believers, we have God. Hmm. So even at a young age, we always need to rely on God don't no matter what's going on you know and you know it's funny um i was talking to a friend after prayer meeting today mm -hmm. and that's just what we're talking about and the the conversation because um one of my classes this semester mm -hmm. is substance abuse mm. and so in our la in our class yesterday we had this discussion you know about what substance abuse is and why people use and pretty much the two reasons were you know that were given was number one to escape pain and just for pleasure mm. And, you know, oftentimes the last resort, you know, it ends up in being, you know, first sometimes it's just to seek pleasure, but really it's to seek pleasure because you want to numb pain. Mm. And so like in our discussion, one thing that came out was that we're just filled with a world of people that are just in pain and they don't know how to deal. And so mm. after prayer meeting today, talking to a friend, that was the premise of the discussion. Mm -hmm. Like when you're in pain, it just like you just need to escape. Yeah. Like that's just it. And if you don't have God, the escape is everything you just mentioned yeah. it's drugs it's whatever you yeah. know whatever can numb the pain for you know this time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so you know like that's you know all of that is okay but it leads to dis well it's not okay because it leads to destruction yeah. you know it it it's and it never lasts yeah you know like once you hit once you take meth like that first hit you will never get that hit again mm -hmm. never mm -hmm. get that hit ever again and that's how it is with things other than christ yeah. like we seek other things to make us feel better but you will never ever find mm. anything that can mm. satisfy that can heal like jesus can heal but i find interesting right because i read mm. this i read yes. this you know yep. part of this chapter today as well but it says who would not be corrupted by selfishness 
Like they're in the courts of Babylon. Let's be real. They're away yeah, from home. Yeah. I went. I remember when I went off to college. My mom was so worried that I'd, you know, just be bad. And yeah. she, you know, her prayer was like, Lord Jesus, please send my baby some Christian parents so that she won't be crazy. Because mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like, and I didn't live on campus. Like yeah. I had my own flat. Like it was just me and my housemate. We could do whatever we wanted to mm-hmm. do whenever we wanted to. There mm-hmm. was no restriction. So my yes. mom was like, please don't let my baby become crazy. <laughs> so you know, she prayed over me, and God really did. You know, was Praise faithful. He answered her prayers. <laughs> But it, you know, so I could just do anything. Mm-hmm. But it didn't say that in the courts of Babylon where they're away from family, they're away from everything they learned. It didn't say they could be corrupted by pride, yep. ambition, or whatever, which was a possibility. Oh, yeah. But it says to be corrupted by selfishness. Mm-hmm. And as you were talking about, you know, like they were true to principle. In my reading and studying, I recognized that, yes, they were taught a principle. A principle that um, was woven throughout their education. Yes was that they were not themselves, they belonged to God. And yeah. so all mm. their powers must be used, number one, to honor God yes. and to bless their fellow men. And the principle that actuated that principle was because they love God supremely and they love their fellow men like mm. they love themselves. Like mm. David loved Jonathan, yeah. you know? And it's just like, this is the principle that they were true to, this unselfishness. And you yeah. said at the beginning, right? Yeah. It's literally in a warfare. Mm-hmm. And there are two principles, you know, at war in the whole book of Daniel and throughout the Bible. Yes. There's a principle of righteousness, the principle of unselfishness, the principle of love versus the principle of yeah. selfishness. It, and this is what we see in yeah, Babylon, right? right? There, it's, it's so true. And, you know, I just want to give a disclaimer, like, uh, just to go back on what you said, you know, Christians suffer. We're not robots. Mm-hmm. Um, we can deal, Christians deal with the same way with issues as non-believers do. Um, it, the point is, is these things, the, the substances aren't lasting. The pleasure isn't lasting. True pleasure, true uh, healing comes from God. Mm-hmm. And we're not excluding, you know, mental health professionals. We're not excluding, your, you know, doctors or people who, who can help you. But your first help should be God. Always should be God. All prayer. I mean, that's true. The foundation of mental health and mental healing. And these guys went through it, mm-hmm. and they could have, like you said, dude. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna climb the corporate ladder here in Babylon. Mm-hmm. I'm just going, you know, make all the money I want, live in pleasure all I want. Though, I, mm-hmm. you know, so you can only do so much as a eunuch in certain realms of that, um, you know, still he could, they could have been selfish. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, but back to the text, these children, these children were described as there's certain descriptors. And I was, I was like, so impressed that, you know, the Bible said this about a 15 year old kid. Cause I I was not Daniel Lord help me. Uh, but I want to be a Daniel. And I, um, so check this out. These were children, right? And you mentioned it. You mentioned it, Chantal, that the first teachers were their parents, Mm -hmm. were their parents. Mm -hmm. So the Bible, and and I'm going to be referencing in this study, a lot of Proverbs. I like, I don't know for sure. I wasn't there with Daniel sitting at the feet of Jeremiah learning, excuse me, of the law and the prophets. But from the Bible that I've read from all my study in this, I legit think he, I, I, I guarantee, no, 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 I can't guarantee. I think he was reading Proverbs. I, 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 look, I got so many references that associate with Daniel's life. Mm. Um, his parents must have read this verse, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, six. Mm. They knew they heard Jeremiah. They were true believers. Mm-hmm. They were preparing these kids mm-hmm. to stand in the courts mm-hmm. of Babylon. Mm-hmm. So wait, what you're saying is that because, you know, every time when I heard this sermon growing up, like when they talked about Daniel. Yeah. Yes. At the, in the middle of this crisis, Daniel just decided he would stand for he God. just popped out of nowhere. Like, but that's not true, though, that's not because, true. you know, like in my later years, you know, I've, I've learned and I'm learning that actually Daniel stood because he was taught mm-hmm. to stand mm-hmm. and the you know the book that you just read patriots yeah. and prophet also prophets says that a kings. prophet and kings yes. okay maybe it's patriots and prophets oh, okay. or prophet and kings one mm-hmm. of those books right also says the same of joseph oh, yeah, that patriots his life was yeah. not his decision to stand in egypt was not 
just it didn't just happen nope. he was taught from younger to not give in to inclination yeah. but to duty and so you know like we all have natural tendencies to yeah. evil we're all born with inherited tendencies yes. to evil and we cultivate them and they become vices that yes. you know we struggle with that's right but from they were young, they were taught not to follow inclination, not mm -hmm. to follow feelings, not that, not that they weren't happy, yeah. but that they had a higher purpose, a nobler mm. calling, and they should not like selfish seeking of pleasure take them over. Yeah. And it was just like, wow. And, you know, something that I wrestled with today was I thought about the fact that this kid didn't do anything. Okay, mm -hmm. he's essentially suffering yes. the consequences That's right. of disobedient people that came before yep. him. And, you know, they had all that they wanted to have. They could have children. They could, you know, have these great homes. You know, let's be real. Judah mm -hmm. was a prosperous country. Yes. yes. And here, Daniel castrated, mm -hmm. you know, like oh, everything, everything that could be great about his life is taken away in a moment. Yep. And I thought about that. Lord. <laughs> For everything that I've wanted or desired of this world. And I'm, you know, like not to be selfish, but just, you know, like everybody wants, you know, to have a family, wants yeah, to have a nice yeah, home. Yes. You know, that's like, you know, normal desires. Right. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking like all of that got taken away. Yeah. And I thought, number one, like, Lord, give me some of Daniel's heart, you know, yeah. like because mm. You, I'm just going to be real. Yeah. I'd be so mad at God. And like, first of all, I didn't cause any of this. Like, why are you letting this happen to yeah. me? But. And as I wrestled with it with God, I was just like, Lord, how was he able to not think about all the temporal things that were mm -hmm. taken from taken. him? He, he, he didn't get to choose to give them up. Yeah. Were taken from him for something that he didn't even do. When you suffer for your own sins, you know, like, okay, Lord, you mm -hmm. just got to, mm -hmm. you know, put on a smile and bear it because you yep. caused those consequences. Yes. But he didn't. And, you know, some scholars even <sighs> say, Chantal, that his parents were killed in that in, in the, this siege. So it's like, dude, you lose everything. You think, yeah, mom, you're going to come with me. No, no. like you're not. Uh, no. He lost everything. And I just, Christians go through it, people. Like mm -hmm. viewers, listeners, Christians will go through trauma. But who do you bring your trauma to? Mm. Again, we don't want to exclude professionals, da, da, da. Don't go on this podcast that Vic and Chantal saying this and that. But you got to, they, all these, Moses mm -hmm. prepared at 12 years old. Joseph prepared, Daniel prepared. They all brought every traumatic event that they went through. They brought it to God. Mm -hmm. They put it at the feet of God. This is the fundamental of how you can make it through life. When crazy stuff happens, when it's not your fault and it still happens mm -hmm. and you got to run, you got to walk all the way to Babylon. You got to walk there. Yeah. Hey, there were no Uber. There were no trains. You're walking. You are walking to Babylon from Jerusalem, 400 miles without your manhood, without your family, just, I can't bring it home. Yet these young men were known for this. No blemish. They looking good. <laughs> we're going to talk about it. Chantal, you can, uh, you know, jump in whenever you want. They had well favored, skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge, understanding science, science and, uh, and such had ability in them to stand in the King's palace in whom they might teach the learning in tongues of the Ch Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. In my research, I said, I, here's Second Peter 3.14 says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. These young men were living sacrifices without spot or blemish. When you look at the Levitical uh priesthood and how the sacrifice in Exodus was supposed to be brought to the altar without spot and blemish. Mm -hmm. These young men were living sacrifices for God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well favored Proverbs three, four. Uh, I mean, uh, Luke two fifty two. Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. We're going to see that their connection with God brought them in favor with Melzar in, in our next episode. Skillful in all wisdom, Proverbs 9, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Dude, I could go. Here we go. Cunning in all knowledge. Wait, wait. Don't whoa, pass whoa, over whoa, that whoa, one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back okay, up, go ahead. Back Stop up. The fear of the Lord. Slow me down. Slow me yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Because, okay, read it one more time. 
the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom mm -hmm. and the knowledge of the holy is understanding Proverbs 9 10 so it says of them right yes. um, that they were skillful in all wisdom yes. and cunning in knowledge and mm -hmm. understanding science and all these things but you said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom that's right so can we conclude then that Daniel and you know the three Hebrew boys Hananiah Mishael Azariah that they feared the Lord yes. and that's why God endowed them not only with wisdom in administrative matters mm -hmm. in school mm -hmm but in all matters Correct. because they feared the Lord. And it's so funny because this is probably the fifth or fourth time today I'm hearing that one scripture mm -hmm. or a scripture similar yes. to that. And as I was reading and studying and praying, whatever I came across, because my question to God was, you know, Lord, um, how are they able to not be bitter or angry against God or the world about mm -hmm. everything that was mm -hmm. taken from mm -hmm. them? How do prisoners of war, how do you know, like, how do you reconcile everything traumatic or bad that happens to you that mm. you didn't cause? How do you not get angry? How do you not get bitter? How do you survive? And, you know, I read Job chapter 28, I think it was. And in Job chapter 28, you know, like Job is saying, you know, like gold has a place where you can go and mm. find it. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about, you know, um, the topaz of Ethiopia, you know, all these precious gems and yes. where they're found. And then he asked like a weird question well, where can wisdom be found? I'm mm. just like, okay, dude, like this is just so <laughs> random. Like, you know, in the middle of, you know, talking about all these precious gems, he says, where can wisdom be found? Mm -hmm. And in, you know, his reiteration of where can wisdom be found, like he says, um, I think it's in the last verse, the very thing you just said, the fear of God is the beginning yeah. of wisdom. And, you know, I was just like, wow, that's so strange. And I was talking to God and praying about it and saying like, you know, how does that relate to the story of Daniel? And then it occurred to me, like, in the chapter with Job, Job says, and also Solomon says it as well, there's mm -hmm. something far more precious than rubies and far more precious than yes. gold, and that is wisdom. And the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So essentially what they're saying, that the fear of God is greater than any treasure that you could be seeking. Yep. And it finally hit me, like, we seek after, you know, like, we live, and how, okay, it's weird, but this is how the Lord reminded me growing okay. up, like, you know, we listen to a lot of Shania Twain. <laughs> you know, okay. I'm just, you know, just being honest. We listen to a okay. lot of Shania Twain. Like so she sings this music. song. Okay, okay. Yeah, right. So she sings this song called Kaching. Kaching. Kaching, right? Okay. And okay, <laughs> nobody judge me. But you know, so the premise of the song is like we live in a greedy little world that teaches every little boy and girl to earn as much as you can possibly and yeah. then spend it all foolishly. Yeah. So essentially to spend it all on yourself, do yes. what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And so, but Daniel didn't yield to that temptation. Nope. And I think it's because he understand the principle that there's something more valuable than seeking all that the world has to yeah. offer to yeah. just, you know, get rich, you know, seeking all these things. And I'm not saying money is bad. Like don't misunderstand yeah, me. Yeah, That's yeah. not what I'm saying, but there's so much more yeah. to life than getting all these things. And Daniel understood that principle that the fear of God is more precious than even yeah. the most precious element that this world has to mm. offer. And so Daniel was taught, and he also made the choice not to worry so much about temporal glory, yeah. but he had a higher calling, and he chose rather the fear of God. And in, I feel like it's Proverbs 8 verse 13, but I'm not sure that it says the fear of God is to hate evil, yeah. pride, arrogancy. Mm -hmm. And then, wow, it started to make sense in my head. To fear God is to hate evil. Yeah. So the reason why Daniel was able to shun the pride of mm. Babylon, to shun the arrogancy, to not just to seek to be popular and, you know, all these yeah. temptations that we fall into was because he understood that to fear God was more precious than anything, anything. else. And so he made that decision that he was going to learn to fear God, which means to hate evil, but also to do good. Yeah, it, you know, and they didn't, like I'm saying, they didn't come in like that. This true education, this was taught by their parents. Mm -hmm. This was taught in the schools of the prophets. This mm -hmm. was taught in places where uh, the Bible and God and the fear of God were uplifted above everything. You, The only reason you're successful in business, you're successful in whatever you do is because you honor God first. Mm -hmm. They came in already taught this. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Nebuchadnezzar thought he had the upper hand, mm -hmm. but they already came in truly educated. Mm -hmm. What true education is, is honoring God mentally, physically, spiritually. They came in like that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see right now that Nebuchadnezzar don't care two dimes how they were educated. I will break you. Mm 
Mm. I will brainwash you. I will break you mentally so that you will compromise no matter what. Mm -hmm. You will compromise. Mm. But they, he never met he never met kids like these. Mm. He never met young men <laughs> like these. So let's see how how he tries to break these kids. Um, you know, you oh, hold up, something's coming to my mind. I I I hear it today. I go to churches. I speak at different places, um, and they tell me, Vic, young people are leaving the church. <laughs> young people don't want to study God's word. Young people are getting caught up in the world. Young people are getting caught up money making. They don't go to church on the seven day Sabbath anymore. <laughs> Part of it is how they were raised in the home. That's the first school. And parents are sad, and I'm mm. not trying to come on parents. We mm. all make our mistakes. But listen, the home is the preparation ground mm -hmm. for life. Yeah. And if you want to be prepared to face this world, there needs to be family worship. There needs to be family prayer. There needs to be this spiritual foundation that if you think you're going to go to college, bro, on your own, high school, whatever, middle school, you're going to be knocked out, bro, by Babylon. Mm -hmm. Satan is around every corner. Mm -hmm. He's looking to destroy God's people mm -hmm. through traumatic events, through whatever it may be. He wants to discourage you in your faith in God. And look at the life of Daniel. Daniel's name means God is my judge. He was taught how to live in this time of judgment mm -hmm. and it's lessons for us. How are we living as young people in this time of judgment? We got to stay faithful to God. We got to know. That everything we do, no matter what, we're going to honor God. We're going to stay to, we're going to be as true to principle like that steel pole, man. Like it, it's immovable. And God will help us no matter what. Chantal, you had a point. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about this today. So one thing that came out yesterday in one of my classes was between the ages of like 18 to 25, which is like college years. Yes. That's when um, those those age group has the most use of like substance, you know, like partying and drinking, yes. all that kind of stuff. And it's so funny because, you know, look at Daniel, yeah. look at Joseph. They were like late high school, college yeah. age, and they didn't make that choice. Yep. And and you mentioned church. And I thought I think, you know, that's so ironic because we say it all the time. Our young people are leaving the church and, you know, we need to do things to keep them. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, you know, have socials. Yep. We play games. We have pizza Entertain. parties. We entertain them and we think this is what's going to keep them. I turn up. But, right? So in this book, which I <laughs> absolutely love, like when I was studying this whole chapter, yeah, like this book was just a gem for me, yes. right? So a lot of things I want to hopefully share um, yes. from this book. So this is quite... Christ Object Lesson, and it was written by Ellen White. Okay. And this is a chapter, I think chapter two, the sower went forth to sow. Mm -hmm. And so she's talking about, you know, you know how the seed was choked out by the, the pleasures of this life, yes. right? The thorns, right? And this is what she says. When the mind is youthful and vigorous and susceptible of rapid development, mm. there is great temptation to be ambitious for self, to serve self. Mm. If worldly schemes are successful, there's an inclination to, conti to continue in a line that deaden deadens conscience mm -hmm. and prevents a correct estimate as to what constitutes real excellence of character. Mm. And then she says something very interesting, right? I'm going to skip that one yes. um, line. And then it says, right, in this formative period of their children's life, the responsibility of parents is very great. So God understands that there is a burden and he knows the responsibility mm. is great. So this is not us knocking parents, right? Mm -hmm. Just, um, you know, making a point. It should be their study to surround the youth with right influences, influences that will give them correct views of life and its true success. Mm. Instead of this, how many parents make it their first object to secure for their children worldly prosperity? Mercy. True success. True. So, yeah, yeah right? Yeah, yeah, So, listen. True education. True success. All their associations are chosen with reference to this object, right? Worldly prosperity. Many parents make their home in some large city and Mercy. introduce their children. So, Mercy. the lot syndrome, right? Many parents, so they choose because it looks prosperous, you mm -hmm. know, because the land has great jobs, because it's city, everything is convenient, it's and right think there. nothing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and think nothing of the the child's spiritual health right yep. 
says, right? So all their associations are chosen with reference to this object. Many parents make their home in some large city and introduce their children into fashionable society. They surround them with influences that encourage worldliness and pride. So we wow. wanted to go to the best schools, the most elite <laughs> schools, you know. Oh, yeah, I don't even know, right, what comes to mind right now. In this atmosphere, the mind and soul are dwarfed. Yeah. That's serious. In this atmosphere, right, dwarfed, yeah. the high and noble aims of life are lost sight of. The privilege of being sons of God, mm. heirs of eternity, is bartered for mm. worldly gain. Oof. And if we remember what happened to Lot, he chose because it looked prosperous, yep. you know? And what happened? Essentially, he lost his entire yeah. family for what it says, worldly gain. Then this this paragraph, right, okay, had me home. just bring like... <laughs> oh, I want to read the whole thing, but I can't. Anyway, many parents seek to promote the happiness of their children by gratifying their love of amusement. Whoa. They allow them to engage in Ooh. sports. Hey. Please don't come for me. I'm just Ooh. reading what the author said, right? Oh, and to attend parties of pleasure and provide them with money to use freely in display and self-gratification. You got to have the latest of whatever. Jordan's, I don't know what, Whoa. whatever. She's, she's the more the tonight. desire for pleasure <laughs> is indulged, the stronger it becomes. Yes. The interest of these youth is more and more absorbed in amusement until they come to look upon it as a great object of life. They form habits of idleness and self-indulgence and make it almost impossible for them to ever become steadfast Christians. And then, right, she says, even the church, she's coming for us, which should be the <laughs> pillar and ground of truth is found encouraging the selfish love of pleasure. Mm. When money is to be raised for religious purposes, to what means do many churches resort? To bazaars, to suppers, to fancy fairs, even to lotteries and such devices. Often the place set apart for worship, for God's worship, is desecrated by Whoa. feasting and drinking, buying and selling, and merrymaking. Respect for the house of God and reverence for his worship is lessened in the minds of the youth. The barriers of self restraint are weakened. Selfishness, appetite, the love of display are appealed to and strengthened as they are indulged. Whoa. So we think we're helping our youth. Oh, they're leaving the church. Let's, mm -mm. you know, let's entertain them. Let's get this and let's get that and all these things. But really, really, what happens is that we're sending them farther and farther away from uh, God. Chantal, man, you, you got messy tonight, man. You had to go yeah, there. Yeah. You went there going hard. Yeah. But it's true. That's the education that will have you compromising. Yeah. That's the education that will that will have you looking for everything other than God. Mm -hmm. And it's in the world and it's in the church. And by God's grace, after this study, you can choose to be a Daniel. Mm -hmm. You can dare to be a Daniel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And let's be balanced, okay? So let me not, you know, let's be balanced. So yeah. we know this is not the right approach, right? Yes. Like there's something far more and let me set a premise. So one of my favorite books, I thought maybe I wasn't going to get to it. Okay, two of my favorite books. Okay. Two of your favorite okay. books. Two of okay. my favorite books. Um, is Madison, God's Beautiful Farm. And it was um, written by Ira Gish and Harry Christman. Mm -hmm. But it's the story of E.A. Sutherland. And he was... Um, he was, oh, sorry. He was um, an educational pioneer in our church, right? Yes. We're Seventh-day Adventists. And he was an educational mm -hmm. pioneer in our church. And something they said in this book that threw me just like way off. We think that education has nothing to do with our spiritual life, right? Mm -hmm. We just get educated so we can learn how to take care of ourselves. So you get a go get, go get to school, get your degree or go get a trade so that you can take care of your family. So mm -hmm. you can make money to support yourself. Yeah. But education is so much more than that. Listen to this, right? Okay. This one statement. I've read this book so many times and I, every time <laughs> I read it, it's like, I've never read it. Right. It says, okay, Yes, but it's not the first basic principle. They're talking about education, right? Mm -hmm. The first one is that a knowledge of God is the essential education. Notice, not a part of education. Mm. Let me let me read it again. Go ahead, go ahead. The knowledge of God is the essential <sighs> education. That his word should be the first or the principal textbook with the book of nature running a wait, close wait, wait, second. Wait, 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 wait. I want my son and my daughter to know math. And all they do is study the Bible. And now, you're telling me, uh, teacher Chantal, that my child uh, is just going to study the Bible and he's going to become smart? So it didn't say just study the Bible. <laughs> Principle meaning first 
or yes. chief textbook. So we're not saying like don't read other textbooks, you That's know. Right. I mean, some of these okay, let's not even go there. Yeah. But it's just saying that the first textbook should be the Bible. Yes. So if you want and you know that book you just read, mm -hmm. Prophet and Kings, yes. I'm sure recounts as well as Patriarchs and Prophet yeah. that Daniel's parents made the bible correct and nature their first study so why why were why were they brilliant in science they why were they cunning in all home? knowledge it's because their parents adhere to this form of That's education right. they taught them the god of nature mm -hmm. not to fear god and revere god or, or take god out of nature yeah. like you know with some principles of science teaches yeah. that's false yeah. science no but they taught them the knowledge of god that's found only through a revelation of his word that's and right. through nature and that mm -hmm. is the essential education so if we as christians think mm. that education has nothing to do with sanctification let me just yep. skip around here for them to tell you that redemption and education are one yes it's the same basic yep. principle it's the fact that we are not our own we belong to our creator so all our powers as you mentioned before body mind spirit belongs to god mm -hmm. and in order for them to be developed to the way they can be developed mm -hmm. we must give our lives back to the creator and and let's just be real the majority majority of education is taught the opposite Number one, you go to school and we come from a germ. We uh, evolve from a monkey to whatever, 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 a big bang, whatever it may be. Um, that's what we're taught our origin. Then, you know, in schools today, we can, you know, don't don't worry about uh, uh, the God of the Bible. You are the God, mm -hmm. right? You are God. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't, that's, that's all a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. And, and so Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. we're going to get into it. Um, we're going to get into how Nebuchadnezzar tries to literally brainwash mm -hmm. these kids and change everything. Mm -hmm. Check this out. So we heard out all the good things. Mm -hmm. We know what true education is. Um, if you don't know what true education is, go look it up. And it's, like you said, the foundation is God. Mm -hmm. All knowledge comes from God. Mm -hmm. I'm a successful student because I'm close to God. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want you to just be some 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 stoic Christian in the mountains. He wants you to actually succeed in life. Mm -hmm. You can, if Absolutely. he wants you to go to that good school, if he wants you to go have a great job and be successful, mm -hmm. yes, praise the Lord. Yeah. Give all the honor and glory to him. And Amen. we're going to see in Daniel's life, Daniel gets Promoted, 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 mm -hmm. promoted. You're talking about leveling up. Mm -hmm. He's leveling up all the time. Mm -hmm. so no matter the hate, no matter the, the circumstances, the trauma, the drama, mm -hmm. he is leveling up and he gives the honor to God. Check this out. Now here comes this big bad uh, Nebuchadnezzar who thinks he's going to brainwash. And the king appointed this daily provision of the king's meat. Number one, mm -hmm. king's meat. What is meat? Food. Okay. And the wine which he drank. What is wine? It ain't uh, grape juice. <laughs> alcohol. It's alcohol. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, let's, let's get some, you know, they, I'm sure they had wine and they, they, they had, uh, uh, that beverage there. But what's today? It's that gray goose, tequila. Mm -hmm. Come on a beer. Jack Daniels, whatever you want, whatever you're drinking is in your refrigerator, listener or, or viewer. If you got an alcoholic beverage, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Wait, I have to say something. Victor. Oh, man. Here we go. <laughs> no, tell so, me. Tell me. So you mentioned alcohol. So for all the well-meaning Christians who said, oh, yeah. you know, science says a glass of red wine is good because there's a lot of resveratrol. OK, we're not even going to touch that. But I will say one thing. That we studied in our class yesterday, you know, it's treatment of substance abuse. Hmm. Yes. Who saw was that? So there's this study and we're looking at this study and mm -hmm. the study um, looked at all the substances, including alcohol yeah. and looked at the impact it had. So they used certain different kinds of criteria and they measured the impact not only on you, mm -hmm. but on those around you. Yep. So, Victor, I just want you to guess <clears throat> Which substance was the most dangerous? And let me tell you all the substances that this study looked at. <laughs> LSD, you know, mushroom, all the hallucinogen mm -hmm. mushroom, mm -hmm. um, meth, you know, cocaine, heroin. Like, you know, they looked at a lot of them. Yeah. So I just want you to think about which substance ranked the highest in terms of danger to self and mankind. Alcohol. 
the most legal. <laughs> okay, and I'm saying, yep. and it went right above, like above the rest. Jeez. So let's not like, mm-hmm, let's not, you know, yeah, yeah. right. I got, so. And and <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna debunk a little bit. Uh, Jesus drank wine. You guys don't obviously read yeah. the Bible. We're and gonna get to it we're in gonna Daniel get to chapter it. three. Yeah, we're gonna get to it three, but I'm gonna address it now. Um, but I want to finish five. the text. It says so nourishing them. They the king look the the king's nourishing them. Mm-hmm. He's almost coming alongside them like I got you. I know yep. your trauma. <laughs> I know your pain. You know things don't gotta change drastically. Mm-hmm. Just you know change what you eat. Mm-hmm. Change what you drink. Become nourished in the way that we live. Mm-hmm. And it says nourishing them three years. This was their quote unquote or so to speak college, right? At the end thereof, they might stand before the king. So this is how Babylon thinks, guys. Mm-hmm. Babylon thinks if you eat this meat, this food, right? Drink wine, turn up, you'll be able to stand. Mm-hmm. You may be able to stand in this earthly kingdom. Mm-hmm. but you're not going to stand in God's kingdom. Mm-mm. Daniel's name means God is my judge. And when you stand before the great judge without Christ and his righteousness on you, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a fearful thing. So check this out. Remember I told you that I literally think Daniel's parents were reading Proverbs the whole time. Check this out. Proverbs 23, one to three Proverbs 23, one to three. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, have mercy, consider diligently what is before thee. Mm. And put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. Mm-mm. And be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Wow. <laughs> wow. Paul mentioned this. Don't you know your body's a temple? Mm. Don't you know your body's a temple? And your spirit, which is our God's, you don't own yourself. That's second first Corinthians six, nineteen to twenty. Then he says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore you eat or drink whatsoever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, (laughs) the king Mm. says, all right, I I took your environment. You're out of your environment. You're out of the Holy Land, right? Now I'm going to change what you eat. I'm going to change what you drink. I'm going to train, change what you learn. Did we even touch the learning part? Hold up, hold up, hold up. We didn't touch the learning part. You know what these people were learning? Man, I got to go back. Listen, didn't we tell you at the beginning of the show, we're going in slow motion. Mm-hmm. We're we going in fourth gear. Slow and easy. You know what Babylon teaches? Babylon teaches their gods. And you know how many gods Babylon had? I'm just going to name two. The god Ishtar. Mm. She's the goddess of love and sexuality and fertility. Uh, All these God had gods were associated with sexual deviancy, sexual practices uh, that were totally far left from God's plan. Uh, Marduk. Who's the God Marduk? This is actually where they brought all those vessels from the temple. You know, you know, the, the time of David and the time of Solomon Chantal, uh-huh. there were wonderful gold and silver and precious metals and everything. In the temple, they brought that to the house of Marduk. Marduk is the god of justice, compassion, Mm -hmm. healing, regeneration, magic, fairness, and also known as the god of thunder. They thought that these gods of wood and stone actually controlled nature. Have mercy. Sounds like we're living in Babylon now. Oh, oh, what God? Oh, you want to talk about, I don't care if you DC, mm. Marvel, I don't care if you're for Thor or Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, whatever man you got, I want to know the son of man. Don't get me started. I know people are smiling now. Don't get me started. I don't care what man, Aquaman, you got all these gods who think they can control nature. Mm. We speaking to young people here. God is the most high. He created the world in seven, six literal days, rested on the seventh, and he made everything you see. When you go out and see the bird, when you see the trees, the sky, the sun, God created it in mm-hmm. six literal days, not millions of years in between. Mm-hmm. This is the God that Daniel was serving. And now Nebuchadnezzar is saying, I'm going to give you meat. And it's not just that, that, nice, that nice rib, a nice chicken bone, not that steak. There was fruit there. I'm sure there was there was melon there. 
I'm sure there were some veg vegetables there. But the, this food was dedicated to idols. Mm. Now, I want to read something. Because I'm going. You, you read some great points. Check this out. Oh, man. This is talking about Nebuchadnezzar and how he moves. This is how Babylon moves. This is how Satan moves. Have mercy. At the very outset of their career, there came a decisive test of character. Prophets and Kings, page 481. Mm. It was provided that they should eat of the food and drink of the wine that came from the king's table. Look at that. It's like, yo, I'm giving you the best food. I'm giving you Wagyu steak. You guys know how much Wagyu steak costs? Have mercy. Costs a lot of money just for that one slice of Wagyu steak. It's prime uh, Japanese uh, beef. It's expensive, and people pay top price to eat that beef. I'm giving you the best. Don't you think I care about you, Daniel? Don't you think you're, you, I want to nourish you in Babylon. Watch this. In, in this, the king thought to give them an expression of his favor and of a solicitude for their welfare. I'm looking out for you, bro. Hmm. I know I just did a whole bunch of stuff to you, but I, we'll make it up to you. But a portion having been offered to idols, the food from the king's table was consecrated to idolatry. Ishtar, the sex god. Marduk, this crazy, this crazy god of the thunderstorms and of healing and magic. Of Nabu, who is all named after Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar is named after him. The god of literature and writing and prophecy in the future. Not the god of the most high. In one, and one partaking of it would be regarded as offering homage to the gods of Babylon. In such homage, loyalty Jehovah ber, uh, forbade Daniel and his companions to join. Even a mere pretense of eating the food or drinking of the wine would be a denial of their faith. To, this, uh, to do this would array themselves with heathenism and dishonor the principles of God's law. Mm. The king did not compel the Hebrew youth to denounce their faith. So he didn't say, don't worship your gods anymore. Don't worship your God anymore. It says, in, in favor of idolatry. But he hoped to bring this about gradually. King Nebuchadnezzar said, listen, we're not going to switch everything up on you. Mm. We want things to change little by little. By giving them names, or we're going to get into the names next week, significant to idolatry, by bringing them daily into close association with idolatrous customs and under the influence of seductive rites, that's Ishtar, was seductive. I'll seduce you through sex, pleasure, appetite, and heathen worship. He hoped to induce them. You talk about drugs. Mm -hmm. Have mercy. You know, food can... Stop, 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 stop. Food can be a drug. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, he hoped mm -hmm. to induce them to renounce their religion of their nation and to unite with the worship of the Babylonians. This guy is smart. He don't want to change everything like that. I'll just wait. Nebuchadnezzar's patient, young people. And so is Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan will wait and wait. You think God is long suffering? Satan's long suffering too. He gonna wait. Okay. You, you faithful in high school. Oh, you're faithful in middle school because you went to a Christian school. What about college? Oh, I'm going to community college now. Mm. I'm trying to fit in. I heard of the party on the weekend. Someone going to turn up. There's this cute guy, this cute girl. We get we getting lit, as the young people say. Mm -hmm. It's getting lit, and I want to see some. So I want to have fun. The devil will wait until you're at your weakest. Mm -hmm. And then he catches you at your weakest. And then when you fail and fall, he's mm. there to point your sin in your face mm. and say how wretched you are, how fake Christian you are. But God will always be there to lift you up. Daniel knew this. So Daniel was educated by his family, was educated in the ways and works of God, and that prepared him to stand. And that's the foundation of, of, of this Bible study as we're coming to a close we're coming to a close and I don't want to stop but I got producers telling me to stop and people are falling asleep no listen they were prepared parents prepare your kids young people prepare yourselves mm -hmm. stop playing games I know social media is addicting it's like a drug it actually messes with your brain mm -hmm. it actually mm -hmm. the 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 
the scrolling effect is addictive. They're, they're called, they're called uh, uh, engineers that make this, right? And so, and I think the studies show that, that it's like almost, it gives you that dopamine pleasure feeling as you scroll, almost like you are, you are uh, at, the, at the casinos, mm-hmm. like you're addicted to this stuff. And trust me, I teach the Bible, I preach, and sometimes I'm in there, I'm like, yo, an hour went by, I'm out here scrolling, 30 minutes went by. I said, Lord, forgive me. We are living in Babylon. Mm -hmm. And Chantal, we need to be truly educated in the ways of God. Mm -hmm. And like I said, and I don't know if it was for you either, but at 15, I was what you described. Playing sports, chilling, hanging out, doing this, that, and the third, not preparing myself. And when these temptations came, I legit fell in in a majority of all of them. But God is merciful. Mm -hmm. And you can still be a Daniel today. Even if you fell. Mm -hmm. Even if you say, Vic, I I messed up in all the things Daniel did. I'm eating that King's King's food. I'm going to get that Popeye's. I'm on, uh, you know, I'm I'm going to, to get that Wagyu steak. I'm sipping that. Yo, don't get me started on these seltzers, these these spike seltzers, Lord. I'm on that white cloth, it's only a little bit mercy. Mm. God can still change you. God still is merciful. And Nebuchadnezzar tried to change their education. He tried to change their appetite. He tried to change their environment. He tried to is next week he's going to try to change their identity and their names mm-hmm. and their character. But Daniel wouldn't let it happen by God's grace. It Mm -hmm. says, as we're going to get to next week, Daniel had a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I just want to encourage all our viewers and listeners that to surrender your life to God. If you're a parent and you're educating kids, educate them in the fear Mm -hmm. and way of the Lord first. Teach them that God is the foundation. That's why you're going to be a great doctor. That's why you're going to be a great accountant, great designer, great whatever you're looking to be is because God wants you to be that way. And he wants you to give honor and glory to him. Not for this world. Um, so stay encouraged that you can change. We can change. Uh, God, the God of Daniel, still the God who's alive and well today. Amen. Amen. So, listen, again, if I were to flip the cameras, you would see all the producers telling me to stop. <laughs> so we got to stop for tonight. And we want to encourage you guys, if you loved the content. If you love God's word, listen, subscribe to our YouTube channel, right? Uh, Let's Reason Together and Spotify. We're on there. So if you work in in the field like me and you ain't got time to watch it, you can listen to on Spotify. And if you're also interested in Bible studies, we our YouTube channel is Seekers of Present Truth. That is on Saturday evenings. I know you ain't got nothing to do. You're at home doing lay activities, You know, only some people know what that means. Sleeping around, doing nothing. Turn on YouTube, watch us live on Saturday evening, Seekers of Present Truth, and join us for more Bible study, more godly content, because you could be listening to, uh, you know, Kevin Samuels about relationships. Don't get me started. You could be listening to Andrew Tate. You could be listening to Kevin Gates. You could be listening to The Breakfast Club. Please like and subscribe. Number one. Let's Reason Together podcast. Number two, Seekers of Present Truth Ministries. Um, And listen, I could go for another hour. I know Chantal could go. She got books. She brought the library (laughs) with her. She got messy tonight, messing everybody's life about sports. Um, You know, this, this, oh, the notification bell. um, Click that. We want to know. We want feedback. And if you got comments, please, last Last uh, uh, podcast, we only got two comments. Comment in the in the chat in the in, in the comments. Let us know what you think. You know, tell us your testimony, how you were like Daniel, mm-hmm. how you stood, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you again, if you want a book, Prophets and Kings, let us know in the comments. If you want Bible studies, let us know. If you're in the Middletown, Orange County area, hit us up. We'll give you Bible studies. We want you to know that we're here. This podcast is Orange County area, Middletown, New York. We're from New York. We're not going nowhere. We're not moving to Tennessee like a lot of people are doing. (laughs) We're not moving to Arkansas. We're in New York, right? So by God's grace, 
Uh, next week, I can't wait. We're going to talk about identity and character. How mm-hmm. Nebuchadnezzar, how Babylon, how Satan wants you drunk, turned up to change your character, to change who you are in God. Mm-hmm. Chantal, wrap us up. Any last words? Because I got to give the whim- woman the last word of the podcast. Because you know, I talk too much. So, uh, Chantal, um, you start with prayer. I'll end with prayer, but give us a little last gem. For the, for the sisters and the brethren <laughs> as it's, we close. You know, funny because we really are living in Babylon. Yep. You know, like um, I've never seen, <laughs> well, you know, I mm-hmm. only have 31 years of life. I think I'm 31. Sometimes I forget. Anyway, <laughs> um, you know, like I know young people are struggling with a lot. We struggle with a lot. Let's, let's be real, let's be you know. Real. And the same struggles you're probably going through, you know, trying to overcome porn or trying to overcome i don't know whatever sexual addictions like drinking smoking you know like trying to fit in with your friends enjoying your college experience and to that that's you know sleeping around you know stepping into all that stuff you know oh let's not even get started on the food we're gonna (laughs) we're getting there we're getting there and we're gonna see the impact on food Mm -hmm. on 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 education and you know you're tempted that you know like well i only have one life i just want to enjoy it yolo um, I just want to encourage you that true prosperity really doesn't come from sinning. Mm. Joseph and Daniel were faithful to God. And we see that Daniel was the greatest statesman. He had many years of service. And Joseph was the best prime minister Egypt had. Mm. And they remained faithful to God. So the answer is not, as Victor puts it, what, turning up? Turn <laughs> That's not the answer. But if you're struggling and we know, we know it's hard to say no, I just want to encourage you, Zachariah, the name means God remembers. God has not forsaken you. God remembers you and he remembers what you're going through. And he has promised that just like Joseph overcame, that you can overcome too. That's my encouragement that God can keep us from falling. And he promises he can keep you from falling too. Awesome, awesome. See, that's why I give her the last word because she's she's more smooth with me, smoother than me. I'm kind of a little abrupt, but uh, again, I'm I'm delighted to have all the viewers, listeners, uh, listening to this content, young people. Uh, God bless you. We're gonna end with a word of prayer, and let's do that. Father in heaven, thank you so much for again the opportunity to come record this podcast, use this platform to touch people's lives, to touch our lives first, and um, to be a blessing, Lord. Father, help us to be like Daniel. As we stand in this judgment, help us to live our lives to honor and glorify you no matter what. Help us to be Christian patriots. Lord, And help us to understand that we live in a great controversy that the devil's looking to destroy us. Mm -hmm. So help us to be vigilant in this warfare of vice and virtue. Father, keep us faithful through your Holy Spirit. Strengthen Mm -hmm. us. Give us courage. As we stand in these streets, in these schools, in these workplaces of Babylon, where everything is backwards and totally different from your word, help us to stand faithful to you through the power of your spirit, through your blood. Uh, We ask that those who are going through some trauma, those who are going through things that Daniel went through, loss of home, loss of job, loss of family, that you would comfort them, bless them. And bring us back next week, Lord, as we again, Engage in this study in Daniel and bless us and guide us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This is the Let's Reason Together podcast. God bless you. We'll see you next week. And uh, stay faithful like Daniel did. Amen. Peace.